Hey everyone, good afternoon and welcome to tonight's workshop. Sound check, please. I hope uh, my sound is working. Let me know if you can hear me and that you can see the slide. All right, it is working, wonderful, great. Well, thanks everybody for stopping by. Uh, again, hope you're doing well and welcome to the workshop. Um, Mind if I introduce myself first? My name is Sami Abusad. I'm Director of Education at T3 uh, Live and Lead Moderator of the Black Room. Also teach a couple of uh, seminars and run two programs. One is the in-person mentorship and I've been doing that for the past eight years. And uh, the other program is called the Nightly Game Plan and it's a brand new, well, not quite brand new, but we started it last year. Um, above all, I would say I'm a hardcore trader. Like some of you, I live, breathe, and eat trading. And I've been doing that full time for over 10 years now. Uh, now in the process of doing that and having been an educator for over eight years, I've also come to discover a few fundamental truths about trading that are so simple, so obvious that they're re real easy to miss. Some of these truths, actually I would say all of them, are psychological. So naturally a good deal of effort and study on your part is going to be needed to really understand how these things work, how these things affect your trading. But then again, I, I don't know of anything that's worthwhile that would not would not require study, effort, and introspection. The other part to tonight's uh, workshop is going to be technical in nature. We'll look at charts, and I'll share with you my favorite trading pattern of all time, the total favorite pattern. Uh, I don't know that we're gonna have enough time to talk about breakouts and how to avoid the ones that fail and all of that stuff. It's really good stuff, but uh, we might not have time uh, to do it. So if what I just said sounds good to you, let's dig in, shall we? I'll be trying to pay attention to the questions. Also, Amber is gonna help me answer some of the questions. But uh, we have uh, over 170 people logged in right now, so it's gonna be hard to keep up with the questions, but I'll try my best, okay? Uh, also, maybe at, towards the end, I can uh, go back and just make sure that uh, no questions have been missed. Um, a standard required disclaimer to let you know that, um, to caution you to the risks that are involved in trading and let you know that trading is risky and that, uh, it's really, really risky if you don't know what you're doing, if you lack the education and if you don't approach it in a professional manner. Uh, please also make sure uh, that you understand that whatever we talk about, whatever I discuss tonight is for educational purposes only. It should not be construed as investment advice at all. So let me start out by, uh, to make it, uh, <laughs> to be a little bit more polite and respectful, let me, instead of calling this a truth, that your trading is in a mess, let me put it to you as in the form of a question. Is your trading in a mess? Is it? Now, what does that mean? Your trading is in a mess. Well, let me ask you this. Are you able to execute, execute your trading plan on a consistent basis? Do you experience confusion, chaos, internal conflict during the day? Do you ever have blowout days, like you, you know, days where you lose way more than you should have? Are you up one week, down the next, up one day, down the next? Is there a gap between your skill level and the results that you're getting? If, unfortunately, if the answer is yes to any of these questions, then honestly, your trading is in a mess. And I know nobody likes to hear that, but that's why you're here. Otherwise you wouldn't be here, right? So the, the good thing, and, uh, and this is also the truth, is um, 
and you know before you get all upset with me for saying your trading is in a mess the honest truth is there's probably nothing wrong with you your trading is not necessarily a reflection of your mental capacity it isn't it's a reflection of your belief system okay so we're getting a little bit deeper already yeah so and in the beginning instead of examining my beliefs when i first started trading i thought there was something wrong with me meaning i thought i wasn't good enough or smart enough to be a successful trader but what i found is if you have common sense and you you know you're a rational human being 99% of the time you're smart enough to be a trader a successful trader anyone honestly can be a trader it's pretty simple compared to other businesses because there's only two directions there's only two things that you can do long or short so the vast majority of struggling traders they're plenty smart to be successful what they lack though is a belief system that is in sync with how the market works because a lot of the things that we're taught in real life uh, don't really transfer very well to trading at all and uh, oftentimes the very things that are these are the very things that are preventing us from becoming successful now let me ask you this what is the number one thing that is essential in real life that is completely backwards in trading that doesn't transfer transfer well to trading at all does anyone know what it is just putting out you know put, just asking you a question let's see if you if you even know what it is the number one thing i would say there are many many other things but this is for me would be number one that in real life is you know is really important but in trading it's completely backwards does anyone know what it is anyone at all okay it's a four letter word word called hope and it's another there's another four letter word called fear right um in real life when things are going against you when you're going when you're hitting a tough patch so to speak going through a tough patch what keeps us going what makes us able to cope with the pain and maintain a positive mental attitude what is it it's hope right and again it's a survival mechanism otherwise without hope we would probably perish as a species as a species but i won't go into that very much so we need hope to deal with with the challenges in life when we're going through difficult times we don't want to fall into depression we need hope to keep us going now let's say you win the lottery let's say things are going great all of a sudden you got this incredible thing whatever it is the lottery whatever it is this this incredible uh, car <laughs> what's the first thing that kicks in what what's the first thing that kicks in for you more for most people the average human being you win the lottery first thing is after the first five minutes maybe of being really happy and excited is fear fear kicks in because you become afraid that you're gonna lose it all right am i right so uh, now let me actually read here i have the book right next to me let me read to you a short passage from my favorite book of all time on trading and it's reminiscences of a stock operator and he says i sometimes think that speculation must be an unnatural sort of business because i find that the average speculator has arrayed against him his own nature the weaknesses that all men are prone to are fatal success in speculation those usually those very weaknesses that make him likable to his fellows or that he himself particularly guards against in those other ventures of his where they are not nearly so dangerous as when he is trading in stocks or commodities 
The speculator's chief enemies are always boring from within. It is inseparable from human nature to hope and to fear. In speculation, when the market goes against you, you hope that every day will be the last day and you lose more than you should had you not listened to hope. They're the same ally that is so potent to success bringers, to empire builders and pioneers, big and little. And when the market goes your way, you become fearful that the next day will take away your profit and you get out too soon. Fear keeps you from making as much money as you ought to. The successful trader has to fight these two deep-seated instincts. He has to reverse what you might call his natural impulses. Again, he calls them natural impulses. Instead of hoping, he must fear. Instead of fearing, he must hope. He must fear that his loss may develop into a much bigger loss and hope that his profit may become a big profit. And he goes on you know, in more detail or and talks about other things too. It's Again, it's a great book. But the point is, in trading, when things are going great, what kicks in is fear, fear of giving back profits. So we always end up, the vast majority of traders, the very, very vast majority of traders, end up what? Getting out of the trade early, a winning trade. And when the trade is going against us, what do we do? We, we start hoping. Because in real life, when things are going against us, in order to carry on as a species, we need hope. It's a good thing to have hope when things are going tough, when, when you're going through, a, again, a tough period in your life. But in trading, when, when it, the trade is going against you, if you start hoping, what, what, what would hope do to you? It would actually make you stay in a trade that's going against you, right? And you end up losing more and more and more and more and maybe go bust. So again, we're all, most of us are probably smart enough to be traders. There's nothing wrong with us, contrary to what I've thought when I've started, when I started trading and I was losing money, I thought there was something wrong with me. The issue is we have wrong ideas, wrong belief systems. Our minds are predisposed to doing a cert, cert, to do, doing things a certain way in trading. That doesn't work. All right? That's the main issue. Um, okay. Now, I can say all of this stuff. I'm reading the comments as I'm going here. I'm not going to read them out, out loud. but Here's the thing. You can take what I say at face value and just say, yeah, yeah, that, that does, I agree with it, makes sense, or I don't agree with it, doesn't make sense. Or you can take it to heart and see how it actually applies to you. Because if it's just informational, I mean, if it's just like, you know, you, you just kind of, okay, listen to what I say, and then you just move on to the next thing, which is what I think most people do, honestly then it will have been, you know, it'll have served no purpose at all, all right? So the, I think really important to, to listen to what I say and then and see for yourself how it actually, uh, how fear and hope and other things operate on you, in you, right? And then see if you can actually move past them and minimize their effect, their impact, on your trading. He says, you must reverse what you might call his natural impulses. Instead of hoping, he must fear. Instead of fearing, he must hope. Now, you can't really reverse being a human being. You can't reverse being a human being. It's hard, it's impossible. That's why when people say you have to trade like a robot, that's impossible. You're always gonna be you. But can you develop enough awareness of the issues so that you they don't, um, they don't affect your trading as much, right? So that you're constantly aware of what's going on inside of you, this, your stream of thoughts, basically, and feelings and emotions, all right? Okay, trading fact number three. Most traders, uh, this is a little, little harder to accept maybe. Most traders do not want to get out of the mess. They do not want to be consistently profitable. They want other things. Would you believe that? Yeah, would you believe that? Uh, and that's, that was hard for me to accept too. Um, 
So what, what are these other things that they want? They don't want consistency, they want what? Most traders want, they want to win, to make money. That's what everybody wants, right? To be right, exactly, Eduardo, to be right. You'd rather be right than profitable. Most people would rather be right than profitable. Did you know that? And win or lose, everyone gets what they want from the market. A lot of us want emotional satisfaction from trading, such as excitement, thrill, fun, emotional relief. That's why people go to casinos, by the way. Why do you think? They know they're gonna lose money most of the time. And some, the compulsive gamblers, they've been doing it for 20, 30 years, and they've been losing money every year. So why do they continue to go? Because again, it's called compulsive for a reason. They're not really making money is not their thing. It's thrill, it's the excitement, it's the emotional relief mostly, right? So when I looked at myself, I mean, looked inside and I, 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 I thought, Oh, my, I always thought my number one goal is to be consistent, to, to achieve consistency. No, it wasn't. I, that, that's not true. That, that's not true. What I wanted was just the money. That's what I wanted. I could care less about consistency. Now, how do you achieve consistency? Now, I know that most of you do want to be making money on a consistent basis. So you do care about the money, but you don't care about the consistency part right <clears throat> excuse me so that so how do you achieve consistency by doing things in a consistent on a, in a consistent basis right um i used to be an auditor for a big four accounting firm we used to say garbage in garbage out so you have to audit the inputs so you can be sure that the output the financial statements were correct um so in um so um so yeah so what i was saying is your effort your your routine on a daily basis needs to be consistent now initially if you don't have the knowledge and the education and the experience yes the result will be maybe consistent you'll be consistently losing money but at least you'll do it in on any consistent basis and and then after a while you'll be able to fix it you'll be able to pinpoint the exact issues, the exact problems, and fix that. But if you don't do it on a in a consistent basis, then um, you'll never you'll never even get to to see any profit, right? If you do it randomly. And again, most people actually do want to trade randomly because that's how they get the the emotional relief and the the excitement. All right. Most people, most of us, we're, we're all biologically, instinctively wired to do that. We most of the time look for trades that make us feel right, high probability trades that perhaps have negative expectancy, or trades that make us feel good, such as buying the low, buying double bottoms and shorting double tops, because then you you think, oh, I'm, I'm really smart, I, I got the low, the low of the day. And those are, and then what's low keeps getting lower, right? Um, those are the very things that don't work. Um, all right, next thing here is, um, next thing here is, uh, so Amber is again helping me out with the questions. Uh, all right, and some of you are saying, yeah, yeah, that, that totally applies to me. Okay, well, do something about it. I'm kind of discussing it for a reason. Yeah, so you know, so you can do something about it. Uh, this is probably the uh, the most obvious one, um, really the easiest to see. Your attachment to money is the main cause of your failure. Um, and let me read this quote for you. I found it in a book a few years ago, and I thought, oh, beautiful! It applies to trading more than it does to life, real life maybe. When an archer shoots for nothing, he has all his skill. If he shoots for a brass buckle, he is already nervous. If he shoots for a prize of gold, he goes blind, he's out of his mind. He sees two targets. His skill has not changed, but the prize divides him. 
He cares. He thinks more of winning than of shooting. And the need to win drains him of power. Chang Su, Chinese sage written like 3,000 years ago. Uh, right? The need to win, the need to be right, thinks more of winning than of sh shooting, more of winning than trading. Right? And the outcome being attached to the prize divides him. He cares, right? It's it's beautiful. Think about it like this. When you're attached to a certain outcome, what's the first thing that goes out the window? Your objectivity. You don't see things as they are anymore. Your telescope goes out of focus, right? That's what happens when you're attached. And most of us are constantly checking the PNL because we're attached to the money, right? Am I right? And uh, so attachment to the money is a big, big problem. The best, absolute best traders that I've met over the years could care very could, couldn't care less about the money, right? Not because they didn't need it or want it or but because they didn't make it a factor in their trading and in, in their decision making and what they do. Okay, so that's really, really important. Okay, any questions? So far, so good. So far, so good. Um, and by the way, that's why it's easy to trade on a simulator. Everybody can make money on a simulator, why? because you're not attached to the outcome. When you're on a simulator, you're not very attached to the outcome. When you're trading real money, you're attached to the money. So you don't trade real well. I'll be able, I'll offer some solutions later on. So I'm not gonna leave you hanging. I'll, I'll give you some things to, to work on if you're interested. Trading fact number five, if you were not actively engaged in making yourself a losing trader, you would, for the most part, for most of you, you'd already be successful. And I don't think I really need to go into it because think about it like this. When you lose, and it's it's inevitable that you lose in this business, what's the first thing that happens? If you're attached, if you care too much, like we discussed, you immediately get upset, right? Which means you get emotional. When you're emotional, do you see things clearly any, anymore? You don't. Again, easy to see why very few traders actually make it. Easy to see why a blindfolded monkey throwing darts at a newspaper's financial pages could select a portfolio that would do just as well as one carefully selected by the experts. Because there, there's that attachment, right? They care too much. And um, it's a big deal, really is. And trading is not easy, but if you're, even after you become aware of these things, but if you're trying to make it without any awareness of these psychological issues, it's almost impossible. Unfortunately, it really is impossible. That's why I don't go out of my way to recommend trading to family and friends because I know they're not willing to put in the time and they're just, they just want to, an easy way to, you know, they think an easy way to make a lot of money. And so they come to me or they get in touch with me. And I just say, no, you probably, it's a better idea to stay with where you are and do what you do. Continue to do what you do. Because I know what they're, they, they don't, they're not really that interested in it. They're not interested in trading, period. They're just interested in, in making money with the click of a mouse, or so they think, right? All right, next. Um, so let me see this question. Uh, what's the main difference between live and simulation? Do, you, do your trades actually have an influence on the market and the price behavior? No, the, uh, the biggest difference, I'm not saying trading a simulator isn't, technically easier it is because you you probably always get filled and you get filled at a good price and you know all of that stuff so it's easier to trade a simulator even if you had no attachment at all but the the biggest difference between simulator trading and actual trading is 
is the psychological element, is the emotional part, which is, you know, when you're trading your own account, your money's on the line. And if you are attached too much to the money, that's why we you, you hear people say all the time, only trade money that you can lose. Because if, if you can't lose it, then you're not going to be able to make money with it. So that's the biggest difference. I've never met a trader ever who couldn't make money on a simulator. I've never, ever met anyone who couldn't make money on a simulator. And yet, the vast majority of the traders that I have met couldn't make couldn't make $100 if it was uh, their real account. Okay? All right. Um, trading fact number six. Charts don't solve your problems. They transfer the bomb from under your lap to... Un from under your lap to under your seat, or from your lap to under your seat. Uh, there was a, a story that I read uh, about um, a, a, a British guy uh, during World War II, at the end of the world, at the end of the war, um, he was on a, he was on, sitting on a bus carrying a big heavy object, so big that it caught the, um, the bus driver's attention. And so he, the driver came up to him and said, what do you have in, on your lap there? And the soldier said, oh, it's an unexploded bomb. We dug it out and I'm taking it to the police station. Then the driver said, you don't want to carry that on your lap. Put it under your seat, right? So that's transferring, you know, again, thinking that charts alone are going to fix your problems. They don't. You have to, the psychological part is just as important. It's actually more important. Now, don't get me wrong. You do have to be really good at reading charts. You do have to uh, to know what you're doing, right? But I don't think that's where I don't think that's where people fail. I think most traders. I don't want to say most traders are good at reading charts, but most traders can be really good at reading charts because it's not that hard. There's two colors: green or red uptrend, downtrend, sideways trend, what else is there? Uh, the problem is we, we lack the psychological or emotional intelligence that's needed, uh, that's required in trading, um, okay? Now, how do you fix it, right? Is there a solution? Yes, there is. Uh, let me first read this email, which I sent to a trader friend of mine, uh, maybe eight years ago, nine years ago, before I even became a moderator. Um, I said, hey, CC, if I, so she, she was asking me, this friend of mine was asking me, how do you enable your mind to switch gears from a human being to, again, a trader? And I said, if I were to suggest anything that would enable your mind to switch gears, it has to be this, stop doing what you know does not work. Forget about figuring out what works and just worry about what does not work. If you're not consistently profitable, you don't yet know what works. And quite frankly, what works is relative. What works for me may not work for you, so I can never tell you what works. What I can tell you is that when you stop worrying about figuring out what works, and instead focus on eliminating what you know does not work, based on your experience, of course, your trading will take a giant step forward. As the quote goes, I don't know the key to success, but the key to failure is fill in the blank and then just work on eliminating it. So that's kind of, I think, an important just thing that you can do tomorrow, starting tomorrow, is look at your trading, right? And you should already know what doesn't work. Why? Because you've always lost money doing whatever it is that, you're, that you do. And the first thing to do is not to try and fix it or to try and figure out what the the successful traders actually do. No, the, the, the right thing to do would be to just drop that, right? Um, you don't do anything to become consistent or unsuccessful. You drop something. It's like health. You don't acquire health. You drop your sickness and you're healthy or happiness. You don't acquire happiness. You drop your anxiety and tension and worry. And then what, what are you left with? Happiness, undiluted happiness. Now, 
okay so that's kind of important you drop what you're doing you stop doing what you know does not work okay that's the first thing and then more uh, tips or more solutions redefine success okay redefine success if being successful depends on whether or not you're making money rather than following your plan and having your routine uh, approaching trading in a professional way doing what you're supposed to do on a daily basis if if being successful depends on the if you make it depend on the result the outcome which is making money we're ultimately in this business to make money i understand but if you if you make your uh, being successful or make your uh, uh, satisfaction with that with yourself with with trading dependent on the outcome then you're going to be miserable because we don't we don't ever get what we want i mean i don't always get the results that i want even after ha having become a successful trader i don't get the results i want so so you want to redefine success so that it's more dependent on you the process dependent on your routine again how you approach trading uh, doing the right things does that make sense not the outcome that's really important understand thoroughly how fear and hope cause a lot of problems they prevent you from reading market information we talked about this hope and fear very very important they prevent you from reading market information objectively. They make you act on impulse rather than hard logic. Make you, and then you, the result of that, if you, if you start acting on impulse, trading randomly, the result is you lose self-confidence to always act in your own best self-interest. If I am always, if I know I'm going to be, uh, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna lose self-control and I'm just gonna go crazy in my trading, guess what? Tomorrow, I'm not going to feel very confident. And without my confidence in myself, I can't make money. Even today, if I don't have my self-confidence in myself to always do the right thing, I, can't, I simply can't do it, right? Can't make money and can't be successful. Number three, accept the risk before putting on a trade. That's so simple, yet it's a step that's often overlooked. You have to accept the risk before putting on a trade and believe that this trade very easily could stop out so that when it stops out, it's not the end of the world. Not accepting the risk is how this vicious cycle begins for most traders. Stop perceiving market information as either painful information or happy information, right? Just it's information, read it objectively. You can't read it objectively, right? If you're attached, if you're too attached to that to a certain outcome. Maintain an objective state of mind by monitor, monitoring your stream of thoughts. You can even video record your trades and go back and or video record your screen, your entire screen, and go back and see what you did, where you did it, and and just and see why. I used to do things that after the close would baffle me. I would say, why in the world did I do that? Why did I get in here or get get out there? No reason at all, almost, right? There was, there were reasons. And that's because I was psychologically messed up as a trader, as a trader, psychologically was messed up. And number six is know that most of your losses are the result of your attitude. Truly, truly, if you've had, if you've received, taken the education, the professional education, uh, education such as the one that we offer at T3, um, then most of the time, and you know what you're doing, and most of the time, the result, uh, your losses are the result of your mental state or state of mind or psychological development so to speak all right um all right any questions so far about what i well, i i i see a lot of questions have been already addressed by amber which is great any questions about the this part so far of the workshop let me know okay um 
Okay, good. All right, let's continue. So now we're going to talk about some technical stuff. All right. Um, my um, really my number one intraday trading pattern, and I call it the bleed because the stock bleeds sideways. Okay. So let's read first. When stocks retrace from prior highs, they rarely put in a quality pullback that's actually playable. Uh, they, so they pull back, trigger, and fail. This happens at least 90% of the time. The 5 to 10% of the time that the pullback is playable, it's not usually playable on the first entry. The thing to do when that's the case is to wait for what we call a, a secondary sign of strength, Okay, a secondary entry. The secondary entry always comes after some corrective price action. The corrective action can take the form of a higher low. Uh, I'm talking about, here's what I'm talking about, just to be sure we're on the same page. I'm talking about when you get a pullback, okay? The first pullback is typically not playable until something else, something happens, like, uh, you know, a higher low, another another pullback with a higher low. Uh, what else here? A double bottom. Uh, where is it? Uh, a higher low, a double bottom, a shakeout, a breakdown failure, a, a sideways base, right? So the first pullback is usually not playable because it fails a lot. The second entry, which can take the form of, a, as I said, the double bottom, a higher low, a base, a, a shakeout, Today I did ATUS. Why did I do the ATUS breakout? Uh, A T U S. Okay, like USA. ATUS. The breakout. Because I saw a shakeout, right? If there was no shakeout, I wouldn't have done it. Um, now, what purpose does this corrective action, price action, serve? By far, the main purpose of any corrective action is to shake out the existing sellers in the stock. Because while they're still while while they're in the stock, it just won't go up. And if it does, they will exit their trades, their, their positions, and the, the the play fails. So the 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 best um, thing about uh, corrective action is that it shakes out the weak hands. These are the, the day traders, the ones that are uh, in it to make a quick buck and and move on something else. They're not committed to a, a larger move. Additional benefits such as to work off steam and allow more demand to come into the stock, bring in new buyers who maybe missed the original move and now have, like this, now have the chance to get back in. Uh, let me see. Uh, you know, if let's say um, can't draw anymore. Uh, okay, well, I can't draw. That's all right. So there are many, many benefits to having a secondary sign of strength. And I'm just kind of going over them now. Bring back old buyers who exited earlier but won't back in. Those are called sold out bulls. Bring in buyers sitting on the sidelines who actually recognize what's happening and exploit it. That's what is this group called? That's the professional traders. Those are the traders that actually can read charts. To trade successfully, one must become intimately aware of the high probability repeating patterns that form on a day-to-day -day basis. These patterns form every single day. Our job is to find them. Why do they form? Why do they repeat? Why do they form do they form on a day on a daily basis? Because human psychology doesn't change. We're, we don't trade stocks, we trade people. There's people there are people that are trading these stocks. And while the group of people that are trading Apple might be different than the group of people that are trading Tesla, they're still the same. They're all people. So these patterns repeat every single day. If they didn't, we wouldn't actually be able to make money. Here's one pattern that repeats uh, that I have found, discovered many years ago that I would say is my favorite pattern of all time when it comes to day trading. The pattern is you have a strong stock that's in an uptrend and the stock put in a pullback, puts in a pullback. The pullback perhaps is 
as you can see, still far away from the 20, so extended. Maybe the pullback was a little too deep. Um, at T3, we teach that the pullback should stay in the range of 40-60% at the most of the prior rally. So that's a pretty deep pullback. That's about 80%, I would say. So the point is, the first pullback isn't good. But instead of failing on the buy setup, right, it pops and then goes sideways. And then uh, when the moving average catches up, it breaks out. So this is a pattern that combines, it's like a play on a play. You have a breakout inside of a buy setup, okay? That's the pattern. You might say, well, why not get it here, right? You can all see my cursor, I hope. Why not get it here? Well, the answer is, you don't want to get it here because most of the time it fails. And you would only do it if it didn't fail and went sideways instead, right? So this this, play, this entry combines a two-minute breakout trend change inside of a larger buy setup pattern, all right? Do I use a simple or a exponential moving average? Simple. I use simple moving averages, all right? Um, okay. So here's the pattern. It doesn't, obviously it's not gonna, stocks don't move in a straight line up or down or sideways. They, they move, you know, they move about a little bit uh, differently. Uh, here's a stock that uh, rallied hard, but then notice the, can you guys see my cursor? I, I don't know if you can see my cursor or not. Uh, here, can you see my cursor? I'm wondering. Yes, you can, perfect, that's great. So, uh, Notice the stock uh, put in a, a bearish top. I mean, this is a this is like a money bar where p traders got caught. This was a green bar, and then it got hit hard, turned into a, a topping tail bar. The stock got hit hard, so so hard and fast that this big green bar turned into a topping tail bar. Stock pulled in uh, two dollars to the prior lows. So the first buy setup you don't want to do. Trust me. You don't want to do the first buy setup after this type of a pattern. Now, in this case, it may have worked, but you probably would have gotten shaken out right there. But either way, you don't want to do this. If the stock goes sideways and then breaks out, that's what you want to do. Breakout, another breakout, and a buy setup. And look at the move. That's a sweet $3 move or so, almost. Beautiful. Um, and then it works exactly the same way to the downside when playing short right here's the so the stock is bearish rallied hard away from the 20 i like to, to enter at or near the 20 so this entry was no no good for me now most of the time stock comes in goes back up and it fails right but if it doesn't and it goes sideways into the declining 20 you, you want to play short under the base as a base breakdown with a stop no longer up here, just over the base, above the base, on the other side of the 20. And look at the beauty. Beautiful, right? Beautiful. SPG today, okay. Exact same chart. Beautiful. I, I don't have my charts up uh, right now, but that's, um, take a look at it, guys. Oh, PG, PG. I traded PG, right? PG, Procter & Gamble. Not SPG, PG. Yeah, okay. I, I, I don't remember seeing this pattern on it, but perhaps there was. I traded it only in the morning. So maybe later on it, it put in that kind of kind of a pattern. Take a look at this. Stock gaps down a huge amount. As you can see, I do get I focus on gaps. That's you know, I focus most of my trading around gapping stocks. Uh, today I did the SCG at the close. It went climactic. Okay, no problem. I'll do climactics when they come up. But what I start my day with is the gaps list. Because why? Because gapping stocks move a lot. They have a lot of momentum. Look at this. Show me a stock that without a gap that moves this much from 14 to 17 and back down to $14. It's very hard to find something that moves this much unless there is some kind of a, a failure pattern on the daily chart. Uh, a gap like this had today, uh, uh, not today, this is kind of an old old chart. Um, so that's why I look at, uh, I, I focus on gaps because they create momentum. 
so okay the first entry here maybe wasn't good if you did it you would have probably gotten shaken out right there but look at the breakout and in the breakout failure was met with the big green bar turned got hit hard so that tells me traders got caught the ones that tried to play it long are now trapped when the stock breaks down they're going to look to exit their selling will start the snowball effect right they sell the stock drops as the stock drops more people start exiting and then you get this kind of a sell-off which is beautiful this is what we take advantage of as traders uh, same here sell setup at the top now in this case honestly could have done it here short at the top because this is my favorite reversal bar of all time which is the narrow body when you have in this a narrow body the bar the size of the bar is the average size it's not a small bar like these bars but it's a it has a very small body on huge volume this is also a break this was also a breakout failure right uh, i don't know why my drawing tool stopped working but i was uh, let me see if i can uh, start it again uh, Uh, where is it? Let's see if I can start it again. So, okay, there it is. That's actually a breakout failure. So could have done it right there, but look at the beauty here. Stock goes sideways, one penny base into the declining 20. Bam. Nice move, huh? On a one penny base, small stock in this case. Another one. Stock gaps down, rallies, comes in, bases, bleeds sideways into the declining 20, and then a short. Okay. How do you find these plays? Honestly, I don't even scan for them. I just come across them. If you have the right, if you're watching the right stocks, if you're watching the right stocks, you will you'll just come upon this pattern. You'll just find it. Almost every day there's I, I find this pattern. I do scan. I do every single day. I scan 1,500 charts during the day. That's a lot of charts. But I have my system set up in a way that allows me to scan 200 charts at a time. And in 15 minutes, I can scan 1,500 charts. Um, so, But I don't scan specifically for this pattern. I just find it as I'm scanning or, right? I just come upon it, so to speak. I don't scan for it. But I have known one or two people, at least one for sure, that programmed uh, their, I mean, easy language and trade station. Uh, they created a program for this, for this pattern to scan for it. That's fine too. You, if you, if you, if that's what you do, if you're a programmer and you wanna, you know program your platform to find it that's that's fine too a gap down sell off and sell setup here nope because it's far away from the 20. now early in the morning it's okay to be far, far away from the 20 if it's early in the morning but look at the base now that was nice and the sell off all of these are trades that i took that's why i i have a picture of them uh, same thing here look at the breakout failure by the way that's a breakout failure. When I see this, my confidence in the play, it goes through the roof. I mean, it go, now I feel 100% sure about it. When I see this breakout failure, all right? Uh, sell off, base, breakdown. Look at the move. Crazy, huh? So that's the pattern. And I can show you more and more charts. Look at this. Does anyone know what this, this is called right here? Does anyone know what this is called? It's called a money bar. Basically, traders got trapped. This was a green bar that got hit hard and turned into a topping tail bar. That's called, yeah, you can call it a shooting star, whatever you want to call it. But that tells me that traders got caught. So as soon as the stock breaks under the base, I want to be in a short. And where does my, my stop go? It, it goes right here. And enter right there under the base, stop above the topping tail bar. Okay. So that's the play there. Okay, let me just, okay. 
um, cell setup extended. Again, in the morning is okay to do a cell setup that's far from the 20, but most, a lot of them don't work. In this case, it worked. And the point is, I don't wanna guess whether it's gonna work or not. I wanna only do the ones that work and give me the bleed. Does that make sense? And that's the bleed. Another one, that's the bleed. That's my favorite reversal bar of all time, the narrow body. It shows there's a real fight. In fact, to prove to you that this is, there was a real fight, look at the volume. Look at the volume. There was a real fight, a battle between the buyers and the sellers. Once the stock broke under, then you knew you know who won, who was winning, the sellers. Short, stop right here, and then pretty sweet move, okay? Now, how could you have known that this was not the bottom? See this candle right here, most people cover. Now, this wouldn't have been a, a terrible exit, multiple bars down, and then sure, no problem, you want out. But how could you have known this was not the bottom and lower prices were still to come? Anyone? The volume. Stocks, trends continue, continue unless they reach exhaustion. When there's no spike in volume or a wide range bar, typically, even after, after a small bounce, stock continues lower, okay? Until it reaches support or you, you know, it's the end of the day or something like this. Uh, you know, more examples. I mean, I have probably hundreds of these. Uh, nice space into the declining 20 and then look at the, look at the move. Just look at the move. 10% of the stock's price. Beautiful. Now here, notice the wide range bar. See the wide range bar? So you don't actually wanna trail it bar by bar, you just wanna take it there, okay? As the bar is forming and as soon as the stock starts to move up, this is on the 15 minute chart, 15 minute time frame. So you go to the one minute and I'm out, okay? Igniting bar, wide range igniting bar, wide range exhaustion bar, okay? A question, is this pattern useful for swing trading? It is. But it's not that easy to find when it comes to swing trading, okay? It's not the easiest pattern to find. Uh, in day trading, it's a lot easier, okay? Um, notice another breakout failure here, or bake and shake, as we like to call them at T3. Uh, breakout failure, base into the declining 20, and then bam. Again, I told you, if there's no wide range bar, there was a decent increase in volume. If there are no wide range bars, if there are no wide range bars, you might get a, a move against you a little bit, but it'll be short lived and the stock should continue lower. See this? We moved up and then continued lower. Uh, and then to long also. So the first buy setup extended in the morning was probably okay to do, but you can see it didn't really go anywhere. And then the stock went sideways over, I was gonna say over lunch, but no, between 10 to 11, off the rising 20, bam, nice breakout, beautiful breakout. But what was beautiful about this breakout also was the retest. See the red bar? So that red bar retested the support and then the stock confirmed it, took out the red bars high and then went higher. Okay, beautiful. Um, Trying to go to the next slide, the same same exact pattern, almost same exact play. Obviously, it's a different stock, but same exact play. All right, the sell-off, the base into the declining 20, and look at the move. <laughs> I know this is a one dollar stock, but just look at the move. 20 cents. That's 20 percent almost. Um, small base, but still, that's not bad on the 15 minute time frame. Um, deep pullback, so probably the first buy setup, no. Stock popped, based, and then another breakout. Beautiful, not bad at all. Base breakdown, right? So, you know, just more examples, more, more and more. Uh, okay, uh, any questions? Let me see before I... Um, is showing a lot of 15, yes, because I used to do this. So the question is, I see you're showing a lot of 15 minute timeframes. Is this the time frame I trade off of? No, but in the afternoon, 
I do focus mostly on the 15 minute time frame, and I used to trade this pattern exclusively on the 15 minute chart. Okay, but this pattern actually happens on any and all time frames. But yes, I, I do trade the 15 minute time. I focus on the 15 minute time frame in the afternoons because the, the one, the two, the five, they're too small. So you can easily get sucked in or shaken out. Uh, so I back off and I, I look at the 15 minute time frame. And then the larger time frame, such as the 30 minute, the hourly, they're too large, especially the hourly time frame. Too large of a time frame for day trading. So the 15 is the perfect time frame for trading the afternoon session, the PM session, right? In the morning, I'm focusing on the one, the two, and the five, especially first thing at the open, the one and the two. Later on in the morning at 10 o'clock, 10.30, five minutes becomes my primary time frame. Later in the afternoon, the 15. Now I always look at multiple time frames before taking a play. So regardless of the time of the day, I always look at it on multiple time frames. But in the afternoon, for sure, the 15 minute chart. And I used to trade this pattern, as I said, exclusively on the 15 minute chart. That's why you saw a lot of 15 minute uh, charts, but it really works on every time frame. Okay, uh, let's see. Yeah, see you there, Ricardo. Looking forward. Uh, as Amber said, you're going to love it. I, I mean, that's a promise, <laughs> really. Um, Gerardo, see you there. Uh, so I just want to say there are three seats open still. This is a week-long hands-on training with me in the Bay Area. If you're familiar with uh, Walnut Creek, if, you, if you're familiar with the Bay Area, it's going to be in Walnut Creek, which is a really, really nice city, town. Um, and um, it's a week-long uh, trading and mentoring experience where I teach you everything. I mean, I don't want to say it like this, that I teach you everything, but really, truly, every essential topic will be covered. Now, you don't go home and you, you become a successful trader overnight. No, you have to implement and apply what you, what you saw, what you learned. But the, the greatest thing about it, in my opinion, is you get to see, you get to kind of live with me for a week and see how I go about things, how I deal with the things that we talked about, right? Um, you get to see my routine, how I prepare for the day, for the open, uh, what I do after the close, what I do during the day. And then on top of all of that, I teach you all my setups and strategies. And I share with you even my trading plan. And I share with you, you know, a lot of things, right? So that's what's great about it. I we a couple of years ago I did I did it in Chicago. I only do it twice a year. Once in New York, I don't do Chicago anymore, I guess. In New York, maybe I'll, I'll one day do Chicago again, but mostly in once in New York and once in the Bay Area. Why the Bay Area? Because that's where I live, so it's convenient for me. New York is is a great city obviously and that's where T3 is headquartered. So I just we took when we were at Chicago. Somebody took um, pictures and and shared them shared them with me, which was great. So this is me right here, and look at the students. Look at this. So they're watching what 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 I'm doing, how I'm trading, basically, right? There's a, a fair amount of I mean a lot of teaching and lecturing and discussion too. So I'm not just constantly trading, but look at this extremely eye-opening when you can see somebody who's been doing it for one third of my life i've been a trader more half of my life almost been a trader uh, consistent and then each student gets dual monitors uh, to uh, workstations so you have your own you can trade you have your own workstations but you can also when i want you to you can be right next to me okay and just like here and watching what I do. And then, you know, this is just a picture of having fun here, but this is a picture of the students that attended. What kind of, and then one day at Chicago, made $10,000. The next day I made four. The day before that it was, I made $1,000. The last day I had a down day, Friday. But what I'm saying is you get to see how I do that. Okay, I'm not trying to impress you with the $10,000. I've had a, a 40 plus thousand dollar day. And I've had 20, 30 multiple times. But um, if I, you know, during the mentorship, that's 
pretty exciting because the students then get to see how I do that. And it's not just uh, ink on paper, so to speak. Now, look at the schedule, right? Just look at the schedule. How to, you know, we go over everything. First day is mostly going over gaps, going over the trading plan, uh, setting up your workstation. So the first day is not going to be live trading. That's the first day, only the Monday. Okay, but then after that, it's all live trading, and and when we're not trading together, then we are discussing all kinds of things: the gap strategy lecture, the must-haves, can't-haves, would like to have, the value of the relative strength weakness, uh, and then here we're trading, right? So how to structure your day how to scan for the markets at the open, how to prepare for the open, right? Prepare, uh, put together the gap watch list. Um, so, and then uh, I also will teach you, will show you how I do my swing trading. I'm also an active swing trader, not just a day trader. I've come up with a, I came up with a new strategy and I actually noticed it first time I, I became aware of it was in 2010 but I only started trading it this year, uh, last year, 2017. Um, and it's called, I just, it's, I play earnings, right? So I get into stocks before they report. And I know it sounds kind of risky and crazy, and that's why I've never done it, even though I've been aware of it for seven years, not eight years now. But, um, I took it, I started to take advantage of it. And last quarter, I think I made uh, 78,000 just last quarter. So now I figured out how to do it, right? I spent the first part of the year, the first actually nine months finessing it and really studying it and figuring out how, how it should be done. And the first two quarters of the year, I didn't do all that great. But last quarter, I mean, I did okay, but I didn't make that much money. Last quarter, again, seventy-six, seventy-eight thousand dollars. And so I'll show you how I do that. We'll scan for those earnings plays together. Day three, Wednesday. Look at this. Just look at this. I mean, the, it's jam-packed with information, incredible information. Day four, the same thing. Okay. So every, you know, for every fifteen-minute period, there's something scheduled. In addition to again live trading and and answering questions, doing things together, last day to talk about market timing, reversal times, the psychology of fear lecture, putting it all together, how to become a consistent, confident master trader. So it's incredible stuff. Now, as I said, there's only three seats left, but. Um, uh, but uh, you know, and there's also a special only good for tonight, only good for tonight. Um, now, as far as what traders attend this mentorship, honestly, from the almost the brand new trader to the very very experienced trader, all kinds of people attend. This is a just a, a an email feedback that I got from you know who it was, vice president at Merrill Lynch. Would you believe it? Vice president at Merrill Lynch of investment at Merrill Lynch. So, and sometimes somebody who might have just started trading two months ago. That's fine too. Uh, look at this. During the mentorship you delivered as promised, you were there early and stayed late every day and gave us everything you had from strategy to execution. It was an up close and personal view of the life of a successful trader. I learned a tremendous amount and I'm already seeing improvements in my trading and results. On a personal level, it was great to, to have met you and spent a few days with you. I appreciate even more your trading knowledge and capability and more importantly, your character and desire and willingness to help other people. Uh, well, you know, so, okay, this is the kind of feedback. This is actually my favorite, but it's all right. I'm not going to read it. Um, uh, students that attend mentorship, I'm up a good half a million dollars for the year after taking the mentorship so personal card again this is coming up february 26th through march 2nd in a city that i really love called walnut creek all right um reach out to customer service if you have um, any questions and uh, there is a special that's only 
good for tonight. So you want to call about it and find out there's only three seats. I'll wrap it up by telling you this uh, famous story about a jungle lion who came upon a flock of sheep. And to his amazement, he found a lion among the sheep. It was a lion that had been uh, brought up by the sheep. And so he had no awareness he was a lion. He didn't know he was a lion. He'd bleat like a sheep, eat grass like a sheep, run around like a sheep. Now imagine the surprise of the jungle lion when he saw this other lion among the sheep. So he went straight for him. He got hold of him and, and said, what are you doing here? And the sheep lion trembled in every limb and said, have mercy on me. Don't eat me. Have mercy on me. But the king of the jungle dragged him away and said, you're coming with me. And he took the sheep lion to a pool, to a lake. And he said, look. And when the sheep lion looked, he saw his own reflection in the water for the first time. Then he looked at the jungle lion and he looked back in the water again and he let out a mighty roar. He was never a sheep again. In that moment, he was transformed. He was never the same again. Well, my friends, maybe in the course of all my talks, some of you will feel encouraged to look and see through all the programming and conditioning that we've all been subjected to as being as part of being humans and get some inkling as to what it takes to be a successful trader. Then those talks and discussions and words will have been worthwhile. I want to thank you all people for attending tonight's webinar. And if you have any questions, as I, as I said, reach out to customer service. Thanks everybody and have a good night. Um, where to stay? Will I'll you know customer service will help you with that. There are places around where you can stay, obviously. Um, let's see. Um, okay, cost of the seminar, Ron uh, Amber addressed that question. All right, thanks everybody. Have a have a good night.